Uh, my paper is titled Snakes Going Places, Analyzing the Place Names Related to Serpent Worship in Kerala. Please bear with me. There will be a lot of uh, descriptions of narratives, so it will be a little long. So please bear with me. Um, it's a curious point to note that the stories concerning serpents, even, in, even if the place and time varies, attributes them with the same mystical powers. They are viewed as the symbols of fertility, life, rebirth, the guardians of wealth and abundance, the great keep, uh, gatekeepers of the underworld. Their periodical molting of skin can be the same reason for snakes to be viewed as symbols of trans transformation and healing. Snake venom is also believed to have the dual power to kill and to rejuvenate. Thus, serpents can be both a bane and a boon. Some snakes, like the king cobras, are very territorial. When they threatened, they often defend themselves and their terrain, resorting to the use of their hoods and fangs. This could be the reason why many cultural uh, cultures attribute the roles of treasure keepers and guardians to serpents. Snakes are believed to be very vengeful and there are superstitious beliefs in many cultures that if heard, they can wait for years for the right opportunity to exact their revenge. Whatever the case may be, fear on the one hand and awe on the other mixes together in most cultures which engage in certain worship. Each culture and region will have beliefs and narratives trying to support such beliefs. Uh, the paper will be dealing with the same, but in the context of Kerala and with specific re reference to two of the most well-known serpent worship centers in the southern districts of the state. Uh, we are trying to analyze the place names and place legends associated with the, uh, these two centers of worship using the lens of translation. The materials have, uh, for the study have been collected from uh, these two serpent worship centers and some other sacred groves, libraries and interviews uh, through field work. Uh, now, going into uh, the concept of sacred groves in Kerala or Sarpa Kaval. Uh, according to the environmental information system of Kerala, the current uh, the state currently has roughly 1,500 sacred groves ranging from a single tree to a few hectares wide. And the majority of them are dedicated to, uh, dedicated to serpents and the rest are dedicated to certain gods and goddesses like Ayyappan, Bhadragali, Yakshi, etc. In Malayalam, Sarpa means serpent and Kava is sacred grove. The Sarpa Kava is the sacred grove dedicated to the serpent gods. The connection between snakes and the state begins with the widely spread origin myth related to the formation of the Kerala landscape. Historians are divided uh, about the arguments regarding the historicity of serpent worship in Kerala. One group leads the argument that even before the arrival of uh, Brahmins in Kerala led by Parshraman, there existed a large indigenous tribe of people who were serpent worshippers. According to the former, this group were nature worshippers but not part of the Hindu religion as such. They were, uh, they were called Nagas and later came to be called Nayas, which is uh, still a caste name in Kerala. Uh, whatever the uh, case, serpent worship is an integral part of the Malayali culture. The curious case is that the worship of snakes is not restricted to one re region or religion in the state. There are some Syrian Christian churches in places like Pudupalli, Idapalli, Aruvitura, etc., where devotees offer prayers to saints for protection from snake bites. There are also some mosques named as Kaidakkavu in and around South Kerala, uh, which are connected to serpent worship. There are numerous myths and legends associated with such places of worship, which shows the depth of the people's belief in the worship of snakes. And it also shows uh, the integral part played by serpent worship in the culture of the land. If one goes in depth about the historical background of serpent worship in Kerala, then it will invariably lead to Parishraman and the Hindu myths related to the origin, formation, uh, origin and formation of the uh, Kerala landscape. Books such as Kerala Charitram, Prajina Keralam, Pulluvam Pattu, Nagaradhanim, etc. argues that serpent worship in Kerala is at least as old as the land's origin. Aryans referred to Kerala landscape as Ahi Bhumi or the land of the Ahi or snakes and the western Ghats as Sahyadri, which can be roughly translated as the mountains with the presence of snakes. Certain, uh, certain uh, mythologies and uh, Tamil epics consider Kerala region as the boundary of the mythical Nagalogam. This is mainly because most of the geographical area of Kerala is below sea level and the people who inhabited here were serpent worshippers since ancient times. Uh, all these are uh, quotations that I have taken from historians, various historians. I am not elaborating because we don't have much time. 
Uh, what are the case? Uh, serpent worship is an important part of uh, uh, the region, uh, most of the region regions in Kerala. The proof of this can be seen in the existence of small and large, uh, large scale, uh, large scale sacred groves dedicated to the serpents all across the state. Another interesting aspect is the presence of the serpent deities as uh, separated installations, separate installations in almost all temples across the state. Whoever the primary deity of a temple is, Shiva, Vishnu, Kartikeya, Durga, Parshraman, etc., the temple will have a separate space for the worship of the serpent as minor deities. Uh, so uh, this is a open uh, one of the family-owned sacred grove, usual setup of a sacred grove dedicated to serpents uh, in Kerala. Um, so the uh, sorry, uh, the cultural impact of snakes on, uh, snakes on Malayalis can be further seen from the examples of traditional Kerala jewellery pieces like Ma Naga Padatali and the continued practice of age-old performing arts like Kullu and Pata and Sarpam Dulal. So uh, then these are uh, images of traditional jewellery used uh, by women in Kerala and uh, uh, you can see hooded um, embellishments on the uh, chains. It's called Naga Padatali. Nagam itself is serpent. Uh, moving on, uh, the origin myth connected to Parshraman. Uh, Kerala or Ahibhumi, as it was known in the mythologies, has an interesting origin story connected to the sixth in the incarnation of Vishnu, Parshraman. There are many variations to this story, but it all boils down to one simple thread. After killing the Kshatriyas, Parshraman decided to do penance to wash away all his sins. He had also committed the heinous crime of slaying his own mother. As part of his penance, he resolved to give away land to the Brahmins. But he did not own any land to donate. Taking advice from Lord Shiva, he threw his axe into the ocean. Uh, from there uh, rose up a piece of land to, which was towards the south which is believed to be the current Kerala landscape. The land that is donated should be inhabitable, but the land that rose out of the sea was inerable and uh, saline. He again asked for advice from Shiva, uh, who instructed him to please the king of the serpents, Vasuki. When Parishraman prayed to Vasuki, the Nagaraja appeared from Patala along with uh, numerous serpents and sprayed their venom on the topsoil. The venom absorbed the salinity of the soil and made it extremely fertile. Now, the land partly belonged to the snakes as they were the reason behind its fertility. Hence, Parshraman, when he divided the land among the Brahmins, instructed them strictly to leave a part of each plot for the habitation of the serpents and to worship them daily. This, is, uh, this in time became sacred groves. Even now, almost every ancient Taravada or ancestral house in Kerala, owned by a large family, will have a sacred grove in its compound dedicated to the, uh, to the snakes. According to legends, Parishraman is also believed to have installed eight major serpent worship centers all through Kerala, the first at Vettikoda in the district of Kollam in southern Kerala. Uh, so I am now moving on to uh, the narratives, the origin myths behind these two temples, uh, serpent worship centers, Vettikoda and Manarshala, which I have chosen. Um, both of these are well-known serpent worship centers, centers and are owned by families uh, for a long time. Both of these temples claim to have been installed by Parshrama and authenticity by reaching back to the origin myth of Kerala. Each temple exists not just in the, uh, as a place of worshipping, but also specializes in uh, venom curing, poison curing, astrology, sacred grove transfer, or Kavumatil, Ayurveda, etc. Uh, so this is uh, uh, Adimulam Vettikoda Sri Nagaraja temple. It's in Kollam district. That's the first uh, serpent worship center that I have chosen. Uh, this place of worship is known as Adimulam Vettikoda Nagaraja temple. As the name suggests, it claims to be the very first serpent worship center to have originated in Kerala and draws it road, its roots all the way back to Parshrama. The story states that Parshrama used his axe to cut and heap up soil and built a platform for idol installation after he was granted his wish by Vasuki. Hence, Vettikoda seems to have been derived from the words Vettuga or to cut or cleave uh, and Kutuga, that is to pile up. So, Vettikutuga, uh, that's the basic uh, uh, explanation to Vettikoda, the place name. The main deity here is Nagaraja Vasuki and Nagayakshi. The temple is surrounded by luscious greenery spread to about seven acres 
maintained specifically as the habitat of many snakes and other fauna. The main idol is that of a five hooded Ananda. The temple is owned and run for generations by the members of the Mepalli Illa. Most of the other sacred groves for serpents follow the Shaivite system of rituals, but Vettikoda deviates by following the Vaishnavite system. The temple is famous for curing skin related, uh, related ailments and infertility. Now we are moving on to the next one uh, or Manarshala Sri Nagaraja temple. Uh, Nagaraja temple at Manarshala is situated at Haripada in the Alapura district of Kerala and belongs to Manarshala Illam. Manarshala also claims, uh, claims its origin and install, installation to Parshrama, but there are other legends surrounding the place name. Some narratives claim that Manarshala was earlier known as Mandara Shala, a place which had abundant presence of Mandara trees. Uh, uh, there is another version claiming that the family members of the Illam have been treated, uh, given treatment to the snakes who were injured and destitute during a forest fire in the area. Uh, so, this is a mandaram flower. It's known as dwarf white uh, bohemia. Uh, uh, so moving back. Uh, uh, so uh, the serpents were treated by the members from the Illam. And this earned them the blessings of the serpent king and the place name Manarshala or Man Aryashala, which literally means the area that had its soil cooled or quenched after a fire. The main deity is in the form of Vasuki as well as Ananta. That means both Shaiva as well as Vaishnava elements are present. Even so, the rituals follow, followed uh, are that of uh, Shaiva system. Uh, another specialty of the temple is that the main rituals require the presence, of, presence and supervision of the female head of the family for the offerings and rituals to be acceptable to the deity. This is in complete variation to all other sacred groves and temples of the serpents in Kerala. The eldest daughter-in-law who marries into the Manarshala Illam has, to, uh, has the right to offer puja at the temple. She is respectfully addressed as Amma or Valyamma, that is elder mother. Upon her death, the next eldest daughter-in-law becomes the Amma. She is also the highest authority when it comes to the temple matters. Uh, in the second picture in the slide, you can see uh, Valyamma sitting and uh, sitting near a kalam. Uh, Rangoli that's created for the puja during Ailim Puja at Manarshala temple. Um, Amma also advises the devotees on their dilemmas uh, related to personal life, infertility issues and sarpadosham or curse of the serpents. There is a separate time allotted each day for consultations and a, a special room where she meets with the many devotees for this. The most famous Uruli Kamarthal ritual related to the temple is believed to bless infertile couples with children uh, hundreds of devotees offer this ritual each year at the temple using a traditional wide-brimmed bronze vessel called Uruli. Now, we are going to going on to what ties these two um, places together, yet keeps them apart. Vettikodi is set, situated uh, in Kollam district and Manarshala located in Haripad, uh, that is Alapura district, and, uh, and is uh, separated by just 26 kilometers. They are both famous, well-visited places of worship in the southern part of Kerala. Both claims their origin related to Parshrama. Uh, Parshraman, yet there remains a subtle level of competition for authenticity over each other. Manarshala enjoys more popularity possibly due to the idea of women uh, as the heads of the temple and their presence being accepted for offering pujas to the serpent king. It's also widely believed that Vasuki had taken the form of a human child according to the wishes of the childless couple of Manarshala Illam uh, and he continues to be present in a state of eternal meditation in the cellar or nilavara of the ancestral house. He is lovingly called as Nilavara Muthachan or grandfather in the cellar and believed to be the guardian deity of the Manarshala family members. Only the Valyama uh, can gain access to the cellar to offer special pujas that too at very few occasions a year. Both Vettikoda and Manarshala claim that they are the ones who have the right to trace back their origins to Parshraman. The slight sense of competition for authenticity is seen from the naming of the Vet, uh, Vettikoda temple, which specifies that they uh, be known as Adimulam Vettikoda Nagaraja temple, the first serpent worship center to be installed by Parshraman in Kerala. There is a strong sense of identity and belonging shown by the devotees who are local populace of each place. During interviews, uh, each showed a certain rootedness and certainty in the temple being the first. While interviews with temple trustees were hard to obtain, both parties vehemently denied the claims of the other. The former claimed that generations ago, a female member of Vettikoda had married into Manarshala Illam and thereby became... Uh, only two minutes, please. Uh, yes, sir, I'll just hurry up. Uh, 
so uh, that's that. Um, uh, and the difference is the um, uh, most temples allow Pulu and a com uh, Puluver com community scheduled caste people to perform Pulu and part inside the temple premises, uh, which are a crucial part of the uh, festi festivities of the temple. Uh, it's usually performed by a man and a woman. They used uh, to be in charge of holding, organizing rituals related to harvest festivals in sacred groves and ancestral homes. Before several former, form, uh, several of the former uh, sacred groves acquired popularity and evolved into serpent worship centers uh, in the current age. Uh, so, the narratives related to snake worship in Kerala are uh, can be considered as inter intergenerational transmissions in the form of Pullu and Parters, Talapuranam, or place legends and stories of miracles based on serpent worship centers. But these collections of stories lend strength to the belief of people, and it still remains as the main reason behind a small and densely populated state like Kerala, still retaining a large number of sacred groves, uh, uh, centuries down from the time they were first uh, supposed to be dedicated as sacred spaces. The sacred spaces exist thanks to the belief system of the people, and these systems in turn are propagated and maintained through the different narratives related to the space. The fear and respectful devotion of the be uh, believers feel uh, that the believers feel towards the space and the belief system is further paved by the existence and atmosphere provided by the snakes and other flora and fauna in the sacred grove. The sacredness attributed to them is what is shared from the space as well as from uh, believers' fear of angering the deity. The snakes are not harmed while inside the sacred grove, thereby providing a safe haven for them. At the same time, the existence of the suitable and safe habitat means that the snakes will prefer to stay away from the surrounding human-occupied spaces and hence less casualty to both species. This may have been the underlying reason for the ancestors to develop the idea of sacred groves, defining the lived space while maintaining a small area of wilderness so as to keep the balance between humans and nature. Uh, I'm just skipping some of the uh, parts. Um, um, there are similar situations related to other cities and places known for serpent worship in Kerala and beyond its state borders, such as uh, Tiruvandapuram, the capital city of Kerala, which is literally known as the holy city of Lord Ananda, and the famous Sri Padmanabha Swami temple is situated here. Pambumekada, Tiruvallam, Nagarkoil, Nagapattanam, Takshashila, Tirunageshwaram, uh, Shesha Pureshwara, uh, sh sorry, sh Shesha Pureshwar, Sheshadri, uh, Shesha Parvat, Nagpur, etc., are uh, other examples of such places with place names connected to um, serpent worship. Um, thank you.